Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor Mechanical Engineering and the Coordinator Teaching Learning Center, Care College of Engineering, Ritchie. This is my new lecture series in the Outcome-Based Education. So the first lecture, why OBE in the classroom? We, we know outcome-based education is a popular word across the educational institutions, higher education institution recent days. We try to understand what it is, what is outcome-based education. So people are talking about different types of outcomes, program outcome, POs, course outcome, COs, lecture outcome or learning outcome, LO. So program outcome, we are familiar program outcome for a particular program. For example, a course, BE Mechanical Engineering or BE Computer Science Engineering. Course outcome, it is for a particular course, a subject in the particular program. And lecture outcome, it is very important for a lecture. So for effective achievement of course outcome and the program outcome, the lecture outcome is very important. So we know the course outcome or the any outcome, it is related with the NBA and NAC accreditation. So when you when you go for NBA accreditation, NAC accreditation, so often people talking about course outcome and the program outcome, not on the lecture outcome. But for effective implementation of outcome-based education inside the classroom, the lecture outcome or learning outcome is very important. So what is education? What is the meaning for education? I have taken the uh, statement from the dictionary. The process of receiving or giving systematic instruction, especially at the school or the university. It is just receiving and giving information is education. Uh, we are all in the uh, field of education. Albert Einstein told, education is not learning the fact, but it is the training of mind to think. So really, the training of mind should happen inside the classroom. That is what real education, real learning is. So real learning, how we are training the mind to think. So for effective learning of the student, the OBE should happen in the classroom. So through every lecture. So we need to understand what is learning. So learning is a process that leads to change which occurs as a result of experience and increases the potential for improved performance and future learning. So I have marked red with the three letters, process, change and the experience. So learning is a process. It gives some changes in the human being and it occurs due to the experience, as a result of experience. So what is the purpose of learning? is to increase the potential for improved performance and future learning. So we take process. So we are in engineering college, we know a process. Any process has got the beginning and the end. And in between, we have certain steps. So learning is a process, not a product. The process takes place in the student's mind. We can only infer that it has occurred from the student's product or performance. So it is a process. We cannot directly see how the process is taking place in the student's mind. But if we can infer the occurrence in the student's mind through the performance of the student or the product what he is developing. So learning involves change. So learning involves change in the knowledge change in the belief of the students, change in the behavior of the student, and change in the attitude of the student. So, because of our classroom teaching, classroom teaching learning process, there should be change in the knowledge level, belief of the students, behavior, or attitude of the student. 
learning is not something done to the students we all think that we are doing learning to the students but it is rather something students themselves do they have to do so the outcome based education again it is known known as it is education student centric learning it is student centric learning so students themselves they have to do in the learning process so it is the direct result of how student interpret and respond to their experience so they have to gain some experience inside the classroom because of the experience only you may find some change in the knowledge or the attitude of the student so this is very important uh, triangle triangle of effective learning uh, proposed by bigs in 2003 there are three components learning outcomes teaching and learning activities and feedback and assessment method so this triangle for a particular lecture so for every lecture we have to fix the target what is the purpose of this lecture why we have to present this lecture what is the outcome what the student will do at the end of the class end of this lecture that is what the learning outcome and to achieve the learning outcome we have to design our lecture so we have to design our notes for teaching i use the word design because the lecture content it will have the material the literature as well as the activity what we do inside the classroom so the activity it should be very simple so that the student can easily follow and do inside the classroom and we have to assess so we are fixing the target at the beginning we are delivering to achieve the target during the session and at the end of the session we need to measure whether the learning outcome is achieved so the based on the assessment or the measurement we have to give the feedback so in the if this triangle happens inside the classroom definitely the obe outcome based education will happen inside the classroom for better learning of the student so in all the three components we have to incorporate bloom's taxonomy the revised bloom's taxonomy we all know that remembering understanding applying analyzing evaluating and creating so we have to incorporate the level of bloom's taxonomy in our the effective learning process so learning outcome we have to fix the learning outcome at a particular bloom's taxonomy for example if i am fix the learning outcome at the understanding level i have to teach and conduct the activity to make the student to understand what is being taught inside the classroom and uh, at the end we have to measure at the same level understanding level so k2 level normally we call it as k2 level so we have to measure so all the three learning outcome and teaching methodology and the feedback assessment and the feedback in all the three we have to incorporate a particular level of bloom's taxonomy and this we know remember understand apply analyze evaluate and create so remember recall the fact or the basic concepts so checking their memory so whatever they have in the memory understand explain the idea or the concept based on their remembrance the first they have to remember then they have to understand then they have to apply use the information what is being understood in a new situation for solving a problem or developing some algorithm then draw the connection among the ideas so when you apply we may have different we may develop different ideas we have to find the connection that is the idea then justify a decision so normally in the engineering we have to make some decision we have to justify our decision that is what evaluate and finally we have to produce some original work or new product that is a create so this is the these are all the different different levels of bloom's taxonomy revised in the year 2001 so this is the lecture note format uh, for obe uh, outcome based education uh, this is designed by me uh, and implemented in the classroom uh, for my lecture so the first you have to write down the, uh, the topic of the unit and the topic what we are going to discuss inside the classroom we have to write that we can we may put a lecture number and look at the statement at the end of this lecture student will be able to we have to write the lecture outcome need not be five lecture outcome 
depending on your content, the course content, we can we can have number of lecture outcome, and we have to carefully write the lecture outcome using starting with the action verb from the Bloom's taxonomy, and you have to write down the level of the Bloom's taxonomy. So here we have to be careful either one outcome or two outcome or three outcome depending on your lecture content. Then you have to prepare your lecture notes. So for one period, maybe for 50 minutes. So we have to write down the write down or type whatever is comfortable. You have to prepare your lecture notes. And at the end of the lecture notes, we need to have assessment questions. So I have two different types of questions here. One is first set assessment question of the lecture. It is in the form of MCQ or true or false or match the following, something like that. And uh, this is for the lecture assessment. So these questions may be used during the presentation, during the class for measuring the understanding of the student. And uh, you need to give, again, you have to fix the Bloom's level. And uh, finally, I have given the the question paper. So you, you can refer to the Anna University question paper if you are in Tamil Nadu. The question paper from Anna University, you can collect few question paper. So the questions asked in this particular portion that you can in, include here with the appropriate mark and the course outcome and the Bloom's knowledge level. So number of questions may be, uh, may be depending on your content. And at the end, you have to uh, fix the reference books. You have to write down the reference books. So when you share this lecture notes to the student, so it will be very much useful. And if they want some additional information, they may refer to the reference book. So you please try to follow this methodology for your lecture notes preparation. And uh, you try to present in the same format inside the classroom so that student will understand effectively and you may you may find some difference in your teaching methodology as well as in the learning of the student so thank you very much for listening i have given my contact here you can contact me for any clarification or any doubt so thank you once again we'll meet again